previously on nodal analysis. So we have this circuit diagram that we need to solve for the nodal voltages. So previously we already know that there are one, two, three, three nodes and this one, the reference node is not included in the number of equations. So we will only be solving for V1 and V2, right? Okay, before we proceed, so this one, as you can, can see, this one is a current source, right? It's different from the voltage source. So the symbol is different. Also this one. So we have 5 amperes as our current source 1 and 10 amperes for current source 2. Okay. Next. No, currently we have a current source. Okay. Next is to determine the current direction. So per branch, we, we need to get the current direction or we need to set the current direction. So in this case, for this branch and this branch, we already know the current direction because I1, as you can see here, it has already this arrow. So the current is flowing from this point and then going in node 1. And for 10 amperes, the current source 2. So the current is flowing, going, yeah, going in node 2. So it's flowing in node 2. Okay. So that is the current direction. Next is, let's determine the current that flows through this branch and through this branch. Okay. So from V1 going to the ground and from V2 going to the ground or vice versa. So we need to know what is the current direction. So if this is zero, the ground is zero volts and this is a non-zero value, this is a non-zero value. So we can assume that V1 or V2 is of higher potential with the ground. And the current flows from the higher potential going to the lower potential. So if this is the higher potential, this is the lower potential. So the current at this branch is what? From V1 to the ground. And at this branch, since this is the higher potential with respect to ground, so current will flow from V2 going here at the ground. Okay? So we already have the current directions for all the four branches but we have the last one this part so here at this branch hey what is the current direction so we don't know the value of v1 we don't know the value of v2 therefore we cannot compare them which is higher in magnitude so we will know the current direction so what we do is we assume a current direction. So it's up to you if you want from V1 to V2 or V2 to V1. It's up to you. Okay. As long as later on in your computations you are consistent in your direction. Okay. Or for me, I wanted to have a current direction that flows from V1 to V2. So for me, I assume that V1 is a higher potential with respect to V2. So I just, I just assume that this is the case. So let's label all the currents that we have here. So we have five branch currents. Okay. Next, we already know the current direction. Third step, perform KCL per node. So per node, therefore, let's have the first one. Okay, node one. So we have I1, we have I2, we have I3. So there are only three branches and then there are only three currents okay, going in and out. So what are the currents going in? We have what? I1 only. Okay. And the currents going out, we only have I2 and I3. So the summation of currents going in should be equal to the currents going out, right? That is our KCL. Uh, that is our, yeah, KCL, Kirchhoff's current law. So, next, 
we have I1 equal to, we only have I1 for I in. For I2 and I3, they are both going out. Okay, that's it. Next is, let's substitute the values. So for I1, we know that it is 5 amperes. So that's why it's just 5. Then for I2, we can express it in terms of voltage over resistance, right? Voltage over resistance is current. So voltage V1, the higher potential minus the lower potential 0 over 2. 2 is this R1, right? That's the only resistor in which the current will flow. I2 will flow, right? There's only one resistor. So V1 minus 0, higher potential minus lower potential over the resistor. This one. In which the current I2 will flow. Okay. Next is plus I3, which can be also expressed in terms of voltage over resistance. So voltage with higher potential here is V1 minus the lower potential V2. Oops, 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 there. So V1 minus V2 over 4. Okay. V1 minus V2 over 4. Next, let's get the LCD of this one. So we don't have any denominator. Mm, LCD is 4, right? So 4, 5. To have a denominator 4, you need to multiply it by 4 over 4. So that will make it 20. Then for 2 to become 4, we need to multiply by 2. That's why it's 2v1, then 0, so 0. Plus, since this is already 4, so times 1, v1 minus. Okay, so you, you already know your math. So that's it, 20 equal to 2v1 plus v1 minus v2. Next. Okay, we have our first equation, 20 equal to 3v1 minus v2. So that is the first equation. Okay, okay. Next, we are, we are already done with the first node. So let's perform KCL at the second node. So here in the second node, these are the currents acting on it. We have I1, I3, I4, and I5. So currents going in, I3, I5. Currents going out, I1, I4. Okay, so again, we need to perform KCL. So the currents going in and equal to the currents going out. So we have Currents going in I3 plus I5 equal to I1 plus I4. Okay. Okay. So next, I3 can be expressed in terms of voltage over resistance. So as you can observe here, this, we also have I3 in the previous KCL at node 1. Uh, we already... We already uh, performed this. Okay. So as you can see, we are consistent here for the current direction. So last time at node 1, the current I3 is going out. So here in node 2, it is going in. Okay. So still, the current direction is in this way. So the higher potential is V1 minus the lower potential V2 over the resistance involved, so 4 ohms, plus I5 is 10. We already know that this is 10. It's given. And I1 is 5. It's given. Plus V2 minus 0. So V2, higher potential minus lower potential over the resistance. The resistor involved in this branch. So we have 6. Okay? As you can see here, uh, for I3, that we are consistent with the direction. Okay. Next. So let us get the LCD. 4 and 6. Uh, 12. 12. So 4 to make it 12 times 3. So 3 V1 minus 3 V2. Then over times 12. 125 times 12. 60. 
plus so 6 to make it 12 so times 2 so 2v2 two minus 0 okay so, so 120 minus 60 60 then we just transpose this one negative 3v1 positive 3v2 plus 2 so we have the second equation 60 equal to negative 3v1 plus 5v2 so that is the second equation okay okay next so we have the first and second equation let us solve for the unknown value so we have two equations we have two unknowns we can solve this by system of equations elimination or substitution reduce row echelon form or whatever that you want to use but i will use the matrix form okay so we have three we just use uh, we just need to uh, substitute the values here getting the coefficients so we have three we have negative one then 20 so the constant value 20 then negative 3 v1 plus 5 v2 so v1 and v2 that those are the the values that we need to get and 60 okay just plug in the coefficients and the values from the equations. So in your calc, you, you can do this by using the equation mode. And it will automatically give you the results. So V1 is equal to 13.33 volts, while V2 is equal to 20 volts. So that's it. We already uh, solved for the nodal voltages, V1 and V2.